This video is brought to you by paintwithfay.com, home of the happy little forest where I upload two tip videos per week. Come and join us. Hi everybody, today let's talk about twigs and sticks and things like that. Things that are made with the liner brush. I'll kind of hold it up against there. So check out the long hairs. This is the number two script liner. And I've had so many people through the years say, I just wish it was shorter. Well, in this video, I hope to help you come to appreciate the length here and understand the advantages to having a liner brush with that long of bristles, hairs, whatever you want to call them. All right, I'm going to turn my camera toward the canvas and paint a few twigs and sticks with you. Let's go. Okay, here we go. So I have a canvas here. I've actually stripped this canvas before. If you look really hard, you might see the silhouette of a mountain under there. And I just strip it with some paint thinner that I um, scrub into it with an old brush. And um, after that's dried, I went in with some liquid white and some like a Prussian bluish. But and there I had to have a little accident. So, but what I want to explain here is this canvas is already wet and if you practice these and i strongly suggest that you do always make sure your canvas is already wet um with a thin coat of liquid clear liquid white um that kind of thing whatever your liquid is and it does need to be a super thin coat and in my library i do have videos about the proper application of these so if you have any question about that make sure you check that because not only does it affect your clouds, your mountains, other trees, but it'll affect, it'll affect your sticks too, okay? All right, so what I was going to do, I've got my little number three fan, and I'm just going to pull that and flip it and pull it. This is some Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going to come in and make a tree trunk right about here. So I want you to see first, this is how I make a tree trunk. And I'm just going to come to about right here because my side view doesn't pick up every bit of that. I'll come up a little higher maybe. And then I'll push down a little bit. And the tree trunk is not my main focus, so I'm not trying to do that perfectly. Okay? I have a tiny little thing here. I'm just going to turn that into a limb. Okay? So, as I said before, I'm going to talk to you about the liner brush and hopefully help you love your liner brush. Now what I put here is I put some Van Dyke Brown and I put some Dark Sienna. This is white, but accidentally, um, I didn't wipe off my knife when I scooped it and put it down. So, um, happy little accident there. I have some color mixed in with my white. And then here's the yellow ochre, okay? The reason I threw some yellow ochre in there is that can make a really pretty color. And um, one day I wanna do a video that talks about trees tree trunks, the colors, and uh, and also after this, if you haven't already, really notice the colors of twigs and such. They're not always brown. We tend to think of it being brown, but sometimes we just need them to be a contrasting color from what we're putting it on. So this is some paint thinner, okay? I'll just kind of tilt that, and this cup I wipe it out every now and then so it's not the cleanest looking cup ever. But this is odorless paint thinner. And I'm putting my brush down in that odorless paint thinner. And I'm going to show you how I put some of this paint thinner on my palette like this. I pick up drops. And look how I flattened my paint. Okay. That is um, purposeful. I'm just going to put a little bit. I don't think I'll put it at the bottom of the yellow ochre. Because by the time I get over there, I'll have thin enough paint. All right, so I'm going to use this brush and look at the angle I hold my brush. I like to hold it at this angle. And when I come over, I'll roll this to kind of get some of that off and I'll come over here to my dark sienna, a little bit in my white. I think that'll probably be my favorite. Okay, and I will thin this later, but for right now, Look how wet that is, okay? Look how I can just about scoop it up. Look how runny it is. Now, 
there's a fine line between having your paint nice and thick, I'm sorry, having your paint nice and thin and having too much actual paint thinner. You need it to be balanced. You need to have plenty of pigment and this clear palette's good for showing that, okay? If you have too much of your um, paint thinner, then it's going to be very transparent, okay? Which is another point. Use a nice opaque paint because otherwise you may end up putting too much paint with your paint thinner just to make it show up on your canvas, all right? I'm coming over here. Now, I want to talk to you about why I spread my paint out flat like this. It's so that I'm not trying to thin the entire pile, okay? As we've been talking, as I have been breathing on this, this has already started to uh, dehydrate a bit. Now, what if I had these up here with my regular paints and I went in and I put paint thinner here? Then that would thin this area. And later, what if I need to use that for land? Then when I need to use it for land and I need it to be thick, I've spoiled, spoiled my paint. I need it to be separate, okay? Now, what I also do sometimes, if I don't want to put it all out here like this, then I will put my paint thinner. And, of course, this is especially helpful if your palette's flat. But my paint thinner will be at the back of the pile. I try to thin this. And then this part, I use my brush with or my knife, and it's still thick, okay? So hopefully those things will help you. But let's get a little bit more paint thinner. And let's go in with some Van Dyke Brown. And I want to show you first how to load your brush, okay? And as I'm doing this, I have to be very careful because it'll run right off my palette. All right, hopefully you can see that. Do you see where I'm holding my brush? I hold it like this. I'm not so much like a pencil. A pencil, I think that was that would give you too much pressure. So you want to hold like this, and you go in and you just roll. Look how far back I'm holding my brush. You'll see that when I get up there. But I'm going in after I've got the right consistency, and I like how I can kind of pile that up. You know, does that help? I don't know. All right. But it sort of piles up. There's plenty of thinner there, but it's also um, the paint has, there's enough pigment there. All right. So I'm going to roll, roll, roll. Rolling it helps to groom all those bristles together, but also really like load it up. Okay. Now, when I go up here to my canvas, I'm going to hold my brush like this and touch in the body of it and then come out this way and then wiggle out. Look how far I can go with it. <laughs> okay, now that's pretty long, but if these bristles were short, it would be difficult to get that much out. All right. Now I'll start in the trunk again and build up. And here I didn't get that thick enough at the base, so I go back and I redo it. And look how it just kind of wiggle that. Wiggling that brush will help your sticks and twigs look so realistic. And I'll just travel right along that branch sometimes. Because as I travel along, it feels a little safer. Okay. And then we have a nice little branch starting to form all right i'm going to get a little bit of the lighter color now don't just take for granted since you thinned it before that it's still the correct consistency it tends to um the paint thinner evaporates all right and i'm rolling my rolling my brush again okay and this may look a little strange because I'm going on the same tree now with a lighter color, but hey, it doesn't have to. It could be on the other side of the tree. Okay, now look at that, how wide and kind of strange that looks, okay? 
But don't feel bad because you can fix that. All right. Start in the tree again. Push. Look at the way that my bristles are pushing. And this is a weird angle for me. Okay. Okay. So... And look how I'm holding my brush at this angle, okay? Always where the paint can flow off. Not this way. The paint's just going to flow into your metal ferrule that way. If you're not happy with your limbs and sticks and twigs, here are a few pointers that I want to give you. Separate your paint color, your stick and twig color, from the rest of your paint on your palette. Okay. Make sure that it is nice and thin with plenty of pigment and not too much paint thinner. You need a balance of both. Roll your brush in the thinned paint with your brush at an angle, trying not to get paint all the way in the ferrule. Travel up the tree trunk and then venture out, painting with the tip of the brush, rarely ever pushing your brush down. I start within the tree trunk so that I am not starting out in midair. Yes, you can start in midair and you can make a nice limb, but it is difficult when you're first learning how to do this. It's a lot safer to start this way. I pushed on that, but like I say, I am at an odd angle trying to make it to where my, um, my side camera can see that, okay? Check your paint consistency from time to time to be sure that you have a good consistency. Balance your tree, okay? Now that I have put all these branches on the tree, say for instance, if I brought it down further on the canvas and I just had a branch here and there, that would look out of balance, okay? So always, if you have several branches on one side, consider that you need several branches on the other side. Hold back on your brush like this and paint with the tippy toes of your brush. Look at pictures of twigs and sticks and let that be your guide. It's really easy to accidentally make your trees and sticks and twigs look like deer antlers. Trust me, I know. I hope this has helped you to make your sticks and twigs look even better. Please like and subscribe and also check out my happy little video forest, okay? We have a great little community. We're learning all the time. I upload videos to that forest library twice a week. Not only that, we paint together every other week, and we have a Q&A on the other weeks. So we have a lot of fun. I would love to have lots more forest members in there. You're all my little painting, painting critters. <laughs> but I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy painting and God bless.